Hey everybody, Brian Von VA here. I hope 2021's treating you right, and if it is, make sure to tell us in a comment below. And if it's not, well, again, vent it out, because we want to read that too. With that said, what was your most brutal D&D kill? Part 1. Well, my most brutal kill was actually as a DM against one of my players, eh, yeah, I regretted it a few minutes later. Party was going through a cave, Party meets a Galeb Durr guarding something. Party doesn't know what a Galeb Durr is, but the creature isn't making any aggressive action towards them. Someone decides to throw a rock at Galeb Durr. Galeb Durr believes the party to be a threat to what he's guarding now. Galeb Durr animates two other rocks to be his Galeb friends. Eventually, the Galeb Durr and his friends manage to get one of the fighters unconscious. So naturally, the group starts dragging him to a safe place, not realizing that it placed him in a direct line from a Galeb friend. Galeb friend, having one intelligence, jumps to the conclusion that the two creatures now together are merging into something else. Galeb friends charges the combo creature, dealing charge damage, which ended up meaning two death save failures to the fighter, who had just failed one the round before. I had to describe the Galeb friend rolling like a boulder into the fighter, smashing through the fighter's body, splashing blood and viscera around him, as well as partially cutting the body in half. My group just finished a beginner's campaign last week, and one of the last major battles we had to fight, we battled a young poison dragon. It was becoming difficult for us to defeat, and several party members had been down from a legendary poison attack, so we had to figure out a new strategy. I was playing a sorcerer, and I was sticking to using cantrips, mainly firebolt, while I was figuring out what to do. The dragon was flying about 50 feet or so up in the air, so our melee players couldn't touch it, and our physical range attacks were missing. I was really one of the only party members landing any damage on it, and as luck would have it, most of my firebolts kept missing. Finally, I had an idea that would make the fight a bit more manageable. I told our DM that I was casting a firebolt, and I was aiming at the dragon's wing, and an attempt to break the webbing and force it to land. It took a turn or two to actually hit, but eventually a firebolt hit and the dragon was forced to land. Suddenly, I remembered something I acquired a while ago that I forgot to use. Staff of Swarming Insects. Staff of Swarming Insects came with a spell. Insect Plague, which dealt 4d10 damage to any creature caught in the cloud and ended their turn in the cloud as long as it remained there. For our level, which was I think level 3 or 4 at the time, 4d10 was a good amount of damage for a single turn. The dragon failed the necessary const saving throw, and I rolled high on the damage. The dragon took 38 points of damage from the Insect Plague. The insects shredded the dragon to ribbons while it was still alive, ate nearly every part of the dragon besides its bones and left nothing but a few scales and a picked clean dragon skeleton. It was the most brutal kill I've had so far. I was playing in a Pathfinder anything goes for classes type thing. Our DM allowed anything D20, so long as we could produce it for his review. So I ended up with a human genes alt, I think that's how it's pronounced, Jedi Guardian from Star Wars D20, and a paladin whose god was Bahamut. For balance purposes, we capped the classes plus D to lightsaber damage to 3D8 and treated it as a unique weapon. It also was enchanted with a plus two at that stage of the game. This meant I was able to smite with a lightsaber, which ignored DR. This is somewhat important. Our group of merry adventurers had tracked some slavers to an encampment where they had imprisoned a number of innocents. Under cover of darkness, we crept our way into the camp and into the holding area. Needless to say, iron shackles aren't a match for a lightsaber. So in a few brief flashes of light, they were free. One of them told us where their weapons were being kept, so we went and recovered them with a group of fighters while some of the civilian slaves were let out of the camp. The DM seemed amused by our planning. An amused DM is never a good thing. We quickly figured out that the bad guy was a party level boss, meaning it'd take all of us to beat him. He had three, if not four levels on us. Our common sense was overruled by a lust for stolen booty. Working with the NPCs, we decided to set up an ambush for the gang and chieftain slaver. While we were doing this, the ranger, I think, was picked off a scout and our halfling cavalier killed one of the few patrolling guards. Around this time, we're staged. Our cleric throws a dead body into the bad guy's hut slash cabin thing. This triggers the warding spell and causes the dead body to explode. 
The bad guy comes out, and before he can do so much as utter a single word, I smite attack him. Natural 20. Roll again to confirm, and, uh, yep, it's confirmed. Then I roll damage. 3d8, 6, 5, 8, plus 9, 47 damage in an ambush. Both archers full attack him for good measure, putting two arrows apiece in him. He screams as he's turned into Darth Maul 2.0, while arrows strike him in the groin and chest. Our DM had a uh, <clears throat> sick sense of humor. It gets better. With my character standing there, purple saber all glowy in the dark of night, his underlings rush out to see the screaming was. Right into an ambush, and my character was the bait. They were so focused on her, they didn't notice the waiting NPCs and players. Two rounds of combat later, and the slave camp is done. As a final fuck, you once we looted everything possible, we went building to building and set them on fire. By sunrise, the once thriving forest village of outlaws was nothing more than a smoldering pile of charred wood and ash. It was glorious. So it was less of a kill and more of a series of kills that ended with an outlaw village being burned to the ground. To the ground, baby! So I was playing in this gestalt game of Pathfinder in which everything, characters and monsters and all, were intentionally overpowered. We were encouraged to play around with crazy and powerful builds. As a level 12 character, I went something like 12 Kensai Magus and 8 Lore Warden Fighter for something I can't remember. Pure unadulterated gishy goodness. I had like 20 million feats, plus 24 to initiative, and a 32 AC and light armor before defensive spells. It was a fun build. Anyway, it was still a pretty intrigue-heavy campaign, and we had been hot on the trail of some traitorous conspiracy for the kingdom. At some point, we were in the middle of a large open area in the city, when a 300-foot-tall tentacled hell beast burst out of the ground and started wreaking havoc. Being a melee caster, I rushed in. My first two turns didn't go so well, though. I missed half of my attacks on my first turn. On my second turn, I managed to cast Shocking Grasp and then miss every attack that round. After which the hentai monster grappled me, and guess what my character was really terrible at? Escaping a grapple. So as I'm being crushed and thrown around like a rag doll, a mysterious figure walks out onto the promenade. I know from a perception check that he's the guy we're after the traitor we're hunting. He's very clearly about to give a villainous exposition monologue. Just before he starts to speak, the party alchemist slash barbarian, basically playing Mr. Hyde, only more so, cuts off the tentacle holding me and I fall to the ground, making an acrobatics check to land on my feet. And it's my turn. There's this spell that the Magus gets called Bladed Dash, which basically lets you take a normal move action, then take a bonus attack, then get to full attack afterwards. I checked with my GM, evil antagonist was exactly 30 feet from me. I still had the unused charge of Shocking Grasp on. Now, I couldn't tell you looking back exactly what enchantments I had on, what feats added damage, and so on. What I can tell you is that I rolled a crit, followed by a crit, followed by two more crits, and as a 12th level Magus, my damage dice for that round ended up being 32 d6 plus about 120. I literally filled both my hands with d6s and just dropped them on the table. I probably could have just taken averages, but I can tell you right now that I have never been as gleeful to do a whole lot of quick addition as I was in that moment. The big bad evil guy went in to open his mouth for the relevatory monologue, the one that the GM had been preparing for months, I crashed into him with the fury of a thousand suns, and as he opened his mouth, his body simply exploded into a pile of gore. I cut through him with such force, four times that the GM ruled that we couldn't gather enough of him for necromancy to work in order to bring him back temporarily for information. He was pissed off at me for the rest of the session, but oh god was it ever worth it. This was almost a two-way kill and one of the most epic moments I've had in a role-playing game. 
It was an evil campaign where I was playing Ralzir, who I've written about before, a tiefling brawler sworn in the service of Zovarim. My personal objective was to hunt down the descendants of the heroes who had previously thwarted Zovarim. Having killed a few, I was granted additional power, turning into a gargoyle hybrid capable of flight. The party agreed to help me kill the next target, a war cleric who was the icon of a rival kingdom and stationed in one of their best defended cities. We convinced our employer, the king of our nation, to besiege the city and we used this moment to sneak in through the sewers and hunt her down. I flew through the city and found her in an alley, fighting to protect some orphans from our soldiers. She was outnumbered and it would have been an easy fight, but I have a flair for the dramatic. I grabbed her cloak and flew her hundreds of feet into the air so she could see the siege. I whispered to her, Now watch as everything you love burns. The DM rolled a few dice, then looked at me and said, You see the cleric calm herself as she accepts her fate. Her sword glows with divine power as she swings for your face, the blade embedding itself in your skull. The cleric slipped from my grasp and fell to her death in front of the chapel as I began falling with about five hit points left. I managed to crit a roll, so I glided down on my wings, crashing into buildings before finally thudding to the ground two turns away from death. I turned to my boyfriend, whose character was closest to mine, and asked him to save my life. He looked over his character sheet for a minute before saying, 200 gold and I'll heal you. I managed to talk him down to 150, so his character walked over to mine and said, I stabilize you, then cast Cure Light Wounds. I might need the good magic for myself. 150 gold for 11 hit points. Never trust an evil cleric. Hey everyone, Brian Von VA here. If you liked today's video, then please leave a like and consider subscribing if you haven't already. And make sure to follow Mr. Ripper on Twitch and join our subreddit r slash Mr. Ripper if you ever'd like to submit a story for us to read in a video or live on stream. And using a help action, you can come subscribe to me, Brian Von VA, over on my channel where I stream games and make voice acting videos. That being said, I hope everyone is doing well and that the new year hasn't been too bad for you. Leave the pain of 2020 behind as now we can move forward in a time of healing and love. And it's not going to be easy and nothing good ever really is, but we're going to get it done together. So stay strong and be safe. We will see you next time. Bye for now.